I, yeah. We can just look at you. That's fine. No, I, I'd prefer to look at you. Uh, how are you, Nick? Thanks for coming on my show. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm doing well. Everybody, Andy of uh, uh, Black Veil Brides, how are you doing today, man? How's life? I'm good. Uh, I have a uh, short window here um, yeah. between uh, two, we, I, we did the South American tour, and then I had a, a really lovely trip to uh, Portugal. It was my first oh. ever sort of vacation. Uh, my sister-in-law got married. Congratulations. And my wife and I went to Portugal and had a lovely experience, and now I understand why people vacation. I'd never been on a vacation before. Never. Uh, both of us are artists, and we've never, we never even went on a honeymoon. We both just went on tour after the wedding, so... Uh, wow! It, we, this was our first. We've been together for uh, twelve years, going on thirteen years. That's and hey, it's our first. Andy, Andy, we need we need a clap for that. Come on, that's Thank amazing. Thank you. Yesterday was our uh, eight year anniversary of uh, of being married. Um, wow! And it was in all that time, it was our first vacation. So uh, it was really lovely. And now I've got about a day or two before I head out to start rehearsals for the U.S. Uh, Bleeders tour. The U.S. tour. Well, add so much, to, so much to unpack. So you've. Like, does this tour almost feel like some, like, is that get enough of, okay, I went outside of home and explored the world so you don't feel like you need uh, a vacation? I thought or? so. Okay. For years, I mean, I'll be honest, I, I don't like to admit when I'm wrong. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to do it exclusively here on your show, Nick. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, for years, because I have toured since I was a teenager. Right. Um, you know, when, when we first got quote unquote big, I was... 18 19 years old and so my experiences were oh my god i'm going to all these countries or oh my god all this stuff's happening and then you do it again and again and again right and my relationship to going to a country is to play a show and i have been to so many places and i have so many you know quote unquote stamps in the passport mm -hmm. but i really admittedly haven't seen anything because oh okay especially after i got sober my primary focus when going on tour is uh, I want to put on the best show possible and right. I want to give people what they're paid for. And so if I have a day off, I try to prioritize, you know, exercise, sleep, you know, trying to, to stay in a, as good of shape as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really go out and do anything. And so while, yes, I've been everywhere, I, I've seen nothing. So I, I kind of was a little bit glib about it. And I thought, oh, you know, I've been to Portugal. It's it's wonderful, but you know, I've I've already seen it. And then I went for a week and had a vacation like experience where you actually go and see things and sightsee and do stuff. And I was like, oh, I've never really been anywhere. So I, that that now uh, now I realize that. <laughs> so it's just, like, it, do you have any places you went that you now look back on? And you're like, damn, I wish I wish I like kind of went outside the hotel like just just even if it was down the street to like go see something well you know cool. what's something that occurred to me is mm. i've always thought very fondly of australia mm. and i think in some ways that's because my first experiences with australia were uh there's a festival that used to happen called Soundwave, mm -hmm. right and it was a million bands and we would all descend upon australia and the way that it was booked was you would stay in a hotel in the city for right. like three days before the festival happened really and then you'd play the show because every city in australia is so far from each other right um the to get all of the many many imagine like a download size festival that's traveling across this very large country with minimal cities mm. so, <clears throat> so all the bands we would fly uh in several days early so in those times you know uh, like Ask Alexandria were on a lot of them and we were really close with them always still are but in the early days we were always touring together and spending a lot of time together so you know I remember like Danny and I going around and seeing stuff you know right. and that and walking the streets and and they would throw events for the bands at the bars and so you saw shit right. um and so because of that you know and that was also like in the days when I was getting blacked out all the time so I can only mm. imagine now I would enjoy it that much more because every time I've subsequently gone back yeah. Um, Ironically, you, know, you would show, see more stuff, but else. you wouldn't have time yeah. to see it because of the blacking out. I guess you can't. Sure. See it. Yeah. Right. I did. I tried to fight the ocean, um, <laughs> oh, the <what>? Indian Ocean, <laughs> the Australian Ocean specifically. The Indian Ocean uh, okay. in I think it was Perth, and uh, I'm a notable ocean hater. Um, okay. Just go way back. Just just because of the the I don't, sea Nick, life I don't or think like it's for us. It's not. I for, think it's. Uh, yeah. I think it's for the the beings that live in it. And I think that our hubris, uh, it really is on full display when we try to fuck around in the ocean. That's fair. And so, um, 
Yeah. I guess in this moment, I thought I'm going to show man's strength against the ocean. Okay. And, uh, you know, like when you're when you're this, this probably happens if you are blacked out, you don't remember it. Right. But okay. someone will tell you that you came up with an idea and then you repeat that phrase over and over again. And right. at some point in my mind, uh, I'm going to fight the ocean became sort of a, became a thing. Right. A thing that I was saying. And uh, then I went and did it. And the thing about it is mm. um, the shallow waters of the Indian Ocean at night mm. are known to be uh, exceedingly dangerous because they are filled with sharks. Oh, so you and there's actually night. signs, which had I gone down during the day, I could have seen that say, oh. uh, don't just don't fucking come in here. Like, uh, don't don't bother. And but I did. And I didn't get eaten by a shark. And uh, here I am. I manifesting the destiny of coming on the Nick Nocturnal uh, show for the second. So, okay, so you don't, you don't fuck with water. Me either, because guess what? We're, we, don't, we don't have fins. We're, we're for land. Do you fuck with yeah. sky? Uh, I jump into the sky all the... I fly all the time. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's Not physically. I get into a metal tube, and then it throws me into the air mm. uh, to a different city on a, a pretty much weekly basis. That makes sense. Because we're not meant to fly either, so that's why whenever... No, but I have no choice in the matter. Uh, uh, the thing is, I can choose not to, to be in the ocean pretty much all the time. That's when, Do you think teleportation is coming soon? Like, are we, are we closer? Boy, uh, from your lips to, to God's ears, Nick, because I would love... The amount of time that I spend uh, in airports, mm. I would love to just be able to get to where I'm going to without dealing with all of that. Is, is it ever... Is, have, have you ever had a good airport experience? Because I don't think it's possible for a human to go to the airport and have a good time. Is, is, have you ever had a good airport experience where it was memorable? You're like, wow, this was a pleasant day. Well, I moved... Uh, like 2000 miles away from where my business is. Okay. So I have to <laughs> I have to fly just all the fucking time, which is sort of the trade off right. of, uh, you know, living somewhere else. And I really enjoy where we live, but, but both of us, me and Lilith, we both have to fly to L.A. constantly or different places. And so I think I've just become numb to being in the airport because mm. I never used to really think about it. But now I, you know, there's a problem when you know not only um, which are the faster lanes in the TSA and oh, the God. different terminals, yeah. but the employees that work in those terminals and <laughs> like right. the gate agents. Mm. I'm now like everyone that works at the Tampa airport. I've clocked them at least once. You're in Tampa. I right now I am. I'm yeah. in Orlando. That's so are funny. You? Uh, yeah. I moved down here from the Canadia. Hey buddy. Fucking okay. Yeah, that's right. I thought, yeah, you were, you were, uh, yeah. Canadian last time we talked. No, okay. not anymore. Now I'm not. I'm no longer Canadian. Yeah, you have to. Re that's how it works, right? You have to revoke your citizenship. Yeah, I, they they took my hey there, bud, and my sorry, and exchanged it for a hell yeah, brother, and uh, fuck you. That's what I got. When yeah, I they take right. your health care and give you truck nuts. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, exactly. That's what goes on here. So, um, yeah. F how was okay? I've been here for three months. Okay. Is that are are alligators a lie? Because chat keeps telling me I'm supposed to have seen an alligator by now, and I feel like well, I've been lied to. You're in the most landlocked major city in Florida, okay. so I don't know. You don't. And the other thing is, it's I, I live by water, um, which oh. is a great irony of me being a, an ocean hater. Yeah, um, and beating up live, the ocean at live, some point. You know, near water. You uh, you live near Disney and yeah. freeways. I don't really know. I nothing against the great people of Orlando, but as a place, right. uh, I'm not certain of its appeal. Do you fuck with Disney? Uh, do I uh, do I go to Disney? Yeah, um, yeah. Like not not like on a business. Do you, I mean like just as a consumer of of cartoony things and the life of Disney? Are you about that Disney life? I am. I'm not not about it. I just okay. am not an avid avid goer. Uh, I have been and I've enjoyed it every time. But it's not it's not in the 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 things that I do. You don't have to understand, Nick, that I okay. Um, I don't I don't love being around people that much. Mm. So okay, that's uh, fair going to a place that is a giant uh celebration of, of uh, people. people being around yeah um can be difficult for someone of the, with the particular particular afflictions that i suffer from hmm. are you how is how is the vibe free because for every musician there's a different it's weird because i like shows uh okay. so i don't know what that sort of loophole is have you ever yeah. thought about playing a show at disney like illegal like the like <laughs> <laughs> the Beatles on the roof sort of thing, like setting up in downtown Disney. I, I didn't I didn't go that route, but let's go that route. Yeah, like that. 
Well, if I can give you a segue that I think is pretty deft, uh, okay. I think that the the reason that I most wanted to do uh, this very violent uh, mm. Sweeney Todd themed EP yes. is to be able to go to downtown Disney and play it for all the children there. Uh, yeah. And so I think and I think it would react well. I uh, think so. Bro, kids all... kids are like three years old on TikTok now. Like we're they're they're, they're exposed to crazy stuff compared to what we you know we had to grow. Kids up are three years old on TikTok. I probably I don't I chat I don't know chat that has kids. Do you have kids? You don't have kids, right? Do you have kids? I don't. But yeah. do, do you have uh, when you say they're three years old on TikTok? You, okay, you mean that there are three years old? They are they are three years old and they are. On I'm TikTok. I'm assuming every young young person in the world right now somehow has magically has an iPhone or an iPad and they're on TikTok. That is what I assume all of every young person from the age of three to 20 plus. Okay. That's probably true. That's that's my assumption. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Just like I Do you assume. like that I haven't yes ended this subject at all and I'm just sort of crashing it into the ground. I love it. It, it, it yeah. I'm testing out what it's like uh, for the vast majority of musicians in interviews where they just sort of answer things with like a one word thing and then just there's a, that silence where no one knows what to do. Yeah. Um I love I've it. never done it because I can't stop talking. Uh, that's another affliction that I have. But I, I did want to test it out. So try ask me a question. And I'll try. I'll do like a standard musician answer. Okay. What wins? Alligator versus shark. But but you have to be realistic. So like you got to do the PowerPoints of each each animal here. Shark. Why? No, see you didn't you did you're oh, you're not you're not being very you're not do, doing good. Okay. You did a bad you I did, did a bad job I, at the All premise. Right. I gave you a premise right. that was uh the mm -hmm. conceit was you're going to give me some generic right. question and I'm going to give you a bullshit answer. What you did ask me is something that does bring me into a very andy answer, which is mm -hmm. that I believe that on land I could fight and defeat a shark. Okay. That's fair. And I've said this a lot. Uh I've told my wife this before. This is a thing that I think. Right. Crocodile, oh, alligator, sorry, alligator, crocodile. We'll lump them in, but I know they're different, right? But for the sake of the argument here. Yeah. Like, what's, like, so, so shark, no problem. You know, you can just run behind it. What's it going to do? You know? Yeah. Flipper? No chance. It all, they all sort of weird me out a little bit. Um, the, the, like, how unlike a dog an animal is, really. That's my scale. Okay. How much like a dog is an animal? Like, you mean to have it as, like, a pet? Like, would you have a pet alligator or shark? The farther away from the shape of a dog, the less interested I am in the animal. That's fair. Do cats? Cats are shaped almost exactly like dogs. They're a little... They're... Okay. I'm talking about the general... You're baking cookies. And you're not a skilled uh, right. maker of a shape. Right. You could go cat or dog. There, I mean, so much so that there was a TV show called Cat Dog. I, they I remember that. I remember. A basic size. That's something that the three-year-olds on TikTok may not know about. They definitely don't. That show was weird when you think about it. Like that is Santa Claus there? I think I heard Santa Claus just arrive at your house. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was my girlfriend dropping a fork. It wasn't Santa okay. Claus. Santa Claus doesn't come to Florida. It's too hot. That might be true. Uh, I, I sort of, as a kid, I used to, speaking of Australia, I used to be fascinated by the fact that uh, Christmas for Australians is in their summer so Wait, is, their santa claus like surfs and is you know is this is this real like is i i don't the the it's the opposite side of the world but why Sant santa he does the same day bro like why well, he's not split yeah, but there's no snow for him you understand that the yeah, right. the weather there yes okay okay so chat yes we're joined today with andy beerzak of black veil brides um Andy, it's so fun to have you on the show again today because, like, I remember when I had you on last time. We did emo TikTok, and I and I have to ask you the question: Do you know what an emo girl is yet? Have we figured uh, it out? It's well, been a year. So I think that I was a little misunderstood. Um, okay. Uh, and it, it isn't that I don't understand uh, contextually what an emo girl or boy or anything is. Okay. But rather that I feel that particularly at the time in which you and I were talking last, yeah. there was a sort of odd cultural thing going on where you anything that is remotely uh, sort of alternative in any way was getting labeled as emo. emo. That's true. Yes. Um, which actually started really at the very beginning of the, the genre, right? Yeah. Like the idea of what is an emo band. Because I, as I said before, mm -hmm. 
when we're coming out yeah. initially and people are calling us an emo band and our music and then another one in our general era is like say like all time low right. you'd be hard pressed to find musically a singularity in any way there uh between mm -hmm. those two types of music and yet somehow mm -hmm. both labeled the same genre so there is a bit of confusion hair metal yeah. is very specific right like we all know right what hair metal is yeah, yeah. but it's it has to do with hair the most it's... nebulous do, of, do you have of, to have uh, lovely hair genre. to be in hair metal sorry to cut you off but this is an important question is well, is having beautiful you probably hair. i believe you had to at one time okay. as as made evident by the fact that uh every single band tours until they die and most of the major festivals and tours uh in the united states are headlined by uh 97 year old men um they yeah. may not have the the hair anymore yeah and i, I have to ask this because we were just talking about emo how much does the term screamo make you unhappy when you hear it i could give a shit about any of it you have to understand nick okay. i'm not a good person to talk to you about that because okay. i have been um w what you might call uh hated uh my band has been uh not beloved by many you're lovely and honest andy I've, I've had so many people on the show and you are one of my favorites and also one of my community's favorites. You are lovely. That's very nice of you to say, Nick. And I'm glad that my personality could uh, be better than how many of you feel about my music. But uh, <laughs> I, 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 I will say that uh, the, the term screamo is to me the same thing as any number of sort of uh, small minded insults that were thrown. Right. So the fact that those terms have morphed into uh terms of endearment i find positive but when right. someone is you know wearing and this is not a diss at this band because yeah. this was a thing that happened on our first warp tour and we actually ended right. up becoming friendly with the band but if someone's wearing an acacia strain shirt and they're throwing something at me yeah. i'm not really concerned about like it's not what's the verbiage that they're using it's, to describe it's a, me it's about the uh, object not the verbs yeah. Yeah. so if i got hung up on like terms right. as as a thing to upset me uh we would have been done a long time ago okay well that's fair well, talking about terms, let's talk about the new track that you guys have coming out. Because I'm excited. You guys got a new track coming out, Bleeders, True. which I, I love the I love the promo. You guys got the sweetie talk. You got the little I don't is it a night pocket knife or like what's the little the straight razor, straight uh, razor. as okay. as used by barbers. Right. Have is have you used that yet? I have an antique one that our bass player got me in. Uh, I think Columbia. This is a hundred year old straight razor. Right Damn. Here. Is it? Yeah. Have you have you tried it? I don't know if you're looking at that, Nick. Do you think I tried that uh, hundred year old serrated blade on anything? It's pretty rusty. I mean, dude. Sometimes when you you know you just got to. You're get not it. far away. If you're interested in getting tetanus, come on over to Tampa, <laughs> and we'll try it out. <laughs> we'll try. I, I just just a full shave set. That's a good way to promo if you guys want. I'll just I'll come by. We'll do a quick shave. T do a chat, and there you go. That's it. Uh, yeah. So, um, mm. Sweeney Todd, I don't know Sweeney if you can Todd. see because I don't know how much of the camera is on me, but I have uh, this right here is the Sweeney Todd from the original cast recording. That's sick. An abridged version of my history with the character is um, it was the first thing, first musical thing that I loved. Um, mm, right. Kind of before uh, my love of like the Misfits and AFI and all those bands sort nice. of got me into punk rock. Uh, before my little kid era love of like Kiss and Motley Crue and ACDC got me into classic rock. Before any of that, my first real introduction into singing a song was via the original cast recording uh, from 1979 of uh, Sweeney Todd. My dad had the CD when I was a kid mm -hmm. and uh, I was obsessed with it. I thought it was scary and fun. And, um, you know, I I've been I've been pretty open in my career about the fact that, you know, I've always struggled um with you know ultimately a manifest for me is is adhd but i've always struggled with a lot of these sort of uh ocd things and histrionics and and right. uh i was really afraid of a lot of stuff when i was a little kid mm. and the way that i the first way that i found to deal with those fears was to find fun kitschy versions of those scary things and that was really a big reason why the misfits became so important to me and that mm. kind of like the horror movie aesthetic because it was um or Gene Simmons spitting the blood. It was approachable versions of scary stuff right. that were sort of my in. And uh, Sweeney Todd fucking terrified me when I was a little kid. Um, you know, because the original recording, like they're using 
really crazy dissonant melodies and it's meant to make it's it's, it's you know it's comedic and it's kitschy kitschy mm-hmm. in its way but sondheim was a genius in that um it is frightening you know the the opening uh music that we use as our our intro tape on this most recent record mm-hmm. or on this most recent tour is scary sounding and so mm-hmm. it was always something that was um a real passion of mine and so uh it took years to figure out a way to do it but just as everyone has asked for a Blackville Bride Sweeney Todd themed EP is coming. Uh, <laughs> uh, that I, I'm not sure anyone asked for it, but it's something that I wanted to do, and I, and yeah. I think people will like it. It's, it's 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 if you want to do it, there you go. We're good. You're good to go. That's the vibe. But I think that's really I, that's that's fun because I mean, there's there's other bands that also like you know with, I know Ice Nine Kills does with movies specifically, and they really thematically like commit, you know, fully commit. Sure. And I, have, I haven't seen, I don't know if you guys do a video or whatnot, I, I don't know, I haven't seen, but I'm assuming you guys, like, you go in and you commit, because I, I know how you guys are, and especially when you write, like, I can tell you guys have concepts, you have ideas, and you're, you don't have ass that. You, you do it all in, you, you do it proper, so, like... No, we have whole ass this, this entire thing, to the point where, um, you know, on the EP that'll be coming uh, later on, that we, we did a cover of the song My Friends um, from That's the sick. musical, um... You know the the song bleeders itself is it was the idea that in in i i find myself observing constantly um how detached i feel from Mm -hmm. other people whether that's you know my peers or the idea of uh like fame or all these things the older i get the harder it is for me to see any of that as enviable Mm -hmm. and how so many people in their lives try so hard to try to have some form of um, perceivable status or make themselves out to be uh, something that is uh, in some way better than other people because of their mm. um, the things that they've gained by virtue of things that they primarily had nothing to do with. And many of that, you know, realistically, I would say that in my position, um, I try really hard and I love what we do. Right. And I also know that when I was younger, it was to our benefit that, um, you know, I people liked the way that I looked or whatever. You know what I mean? And there are right. things that in some ways get people in a position where they start to trick themselves into thinking that um, their quote unquote fame or their ability uh, is somehow greater than a human being. And yeah. I've always really had an issue with that. And I like to look at uh, what we do as um hard work a little bit of luck and drive and tenacity and i've always tried to make sure that our audience knows that nothing that i do is not composite of anything that they couldn't do i just obsess over this and i've been given this platform so i try really hard to make stuff that i think is worth a shit right and so i i became increasingly frustrated with the idea that um there are certain people in the world who perceive themselves as uh more than yeah. others and we have such a culture that's predicated on um idol worship hero worship you see it with politics people uh put all their hopes and dreams into a person that they've never met and doesn't give a shit about them or their family and yeah, you yeah. know it, it it has become so much that uh people represent teams or ideologies that are now the totality of someone's personality yes and so instead of the i got really interested yeah. in the idea that you know, it's it's a basic phrase and, and an idea that we all bleed, right? You know, yeah. everybody has that sort of uh, thing about us and that we are human innately. Yeah. Um, I think that most people are trying to be good in some way or do the right thing. I think that a lot of us don't know what we're dealing with when it comes to day to day. And I think beyond anything else, um, when you put yourself on that pedestal and you put yourself in a position where people uh, are looking to you as as if you know everything or you have the answers, it's a very slippery slope and it's dangerous because yeah. uh, none of us do. And I want people to know that um, I struggle every day with knowing what the fuck to do. Uh, I struggle with whether I'm certain of something that I'm doing or um, decision making or you know all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm yeah. somebody who I, I don't even get on social media. I, I post and then I generally just log out because the idea of dealing with seeing what people say about me or all that is just too, it's too much right. for for me it, it's not good for my mental health um so this idea that kept i kept thinking about was we all do what it is we need to get through life to try to find joy and happiness and become uh happy with ourselves mm-hmm. and 
Uh, and yet, and while we all have these virtuous aspirations, we all also like harbor resentments and hatreds. Like, you know, there are like yeah. five to 10 people that I, I hate, uh, <laughs> like, you know, like, and, and by the way, with good reason, and they may hate me as well, uh, and probably do, but there are people that I've, whether it's through my career or my life, whatever it is that you come in contact with that have done something wrong to you or yeah. fuck you over in some way that even if you want to be so above it and so virtuous and act as if you're right. not you can't help it you're like ah but fuck that person <laughs> right like and you can't shake that sometimes <laughs> so i wanted to write yeah. lyrically i wanted a song that represents both the idea that i know that i'm not better than somebody else but but also like fuck that person right and you know and it's okay to feel that way and it's okay to to still want to be a good it doesn't make you a bad person because yeah you want kind of revenge on on a situation or you want to prove I mean, yourself it's, it's to somebody like whatever you know it it's i think it's it's human to, to kind of feel like that and people that have done you wrong you 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 know don't always feel the best of them you know it's it's not the best feeling and uh, and so i love talking with you too because you are and i've always you know watching interviews even way back when like you're just a fun humble dude but i love that like you don't like take shit you know what i mean like you're humble <laughs> You're humble and chill, but like if someone you know messes with you, like I know, like you're you're you won't you'll just be like, what's wrong with you? You know, like you'll 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 you won't. Just or I'll yell at people yeah. uh, at an award show uh, and and uh, <laughs> body shame them in a in a regrettable way. <laughs> regrettable, but but you know you know what I mean. Like it's 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 something where like you are very human and a lot of musicians especially you know at your level or whatever like celebrities and people with you know following and all that they they don't have that humility you know that that, that yeah. like they're not very self-aware they're just like hey i'm here and a lot of people really like me so i'm just gonna stand on the big pedestal and make everyone love me and live in fantasy land and you know everyone else is wrong and i'm right and that's something that i see a, a lot with not, but I think it's know. a difficult position, though. I yeah. feel like when you're a kid, and, and a lot of us come from a place of we were the weird kid or the different kid or whatever, and then you're put in this position, especially like I know in my experience, I was so young. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the fuck I was when people started wanting my autograph. I was a teenager. So right. like it didn't, I was mimicking personality traits of other people, essentially, and trying to build who I was. And I think the tricky thing that we have now is there's an expectation of anybody who's famous on any level to not only um, be uh, a uh, thought leader, but also be somebody who is is on the right side of everything and thinks the right things and says yeah, the right yeah. stuff. And it's wonderful if that's the case. But the truth of the matter is that the totality of existence is, is entirely gray. Yeah. And for all of us, I think all of us in the world would benefit from having an understanding that um, the person next to you is struggling with 75 things that are under the surface yeah. the way that you are. And there is there should not be an expectation uh, that just because someone wrote a song that you like that they suddenly know more about things than you do. They're just right. as dumb about things <laughs> as you know you might think you are. And they're just as smart about things as you think you are. They're, right. They are composite of you in every way. The only difference is that maybe they have this one skill set. So I do think that I, I find myself sometimes being a little bit of a, of a, a man out of time in a way because mm -hmm. I view um what i do as a very different thing like i i don't i want i want to to curate and present the version of myself that i want you to see and that is that in that way that i liked to go see mm. you know afi as a kid and you'd see davy havoc for right. like two seconds uh walk away you know what i mean and i i like i'm much more personable in that way um yeah. and i enjoy meeting our audience yeah. Uh, well, you're very and, charismatic and you you like are alive like you know like you have sure, but i think the distinction is i also don't give a shit if you know what i ate for breakfast like right. i don't want to show you everything about my day because i'm i'm just i'm just trying to get through my day anyway right. like and so to put on a presentation then also makes you in, in a place where there's an expectation that you have the defining thought on everything that happens in the world or yeah. you have the best thing to say about everything mm -hmm. because why wouldn't you You've shown us every goddamn thing that you thought today otherwise. So yeah. surely you have a thought on this or that. And I think that that's a tricky place to be. So um, it's, by the way, I mean, this is obviously not something that in this day and age, when I go into meetings with like social media teams, I'm, you know, they're not, I, they're not thrilled about it. I'm like, well, should we really aim to put out the dumbest thing possible just so we have something all day long? Like, is that right. really what our job is? Yeah. 
Well, that's sort of what it is now. People expect um, low level, uncurated, mm. shitty content from people mm -hmm. so that they can feel a connection to them that is entirely uh, orchestrated by the team of this person, mm -hmm. but feels more personal. Well, and Andy, in my mind, I think that that's cheating your audience more. That's what we do here all day. It's just I don't have a team. That's the difference. But the distinction is what you're doing is presenting exactly right. what you want to present. And sure, then what yeah. we have in on this side of things is, and, I, and I'm not saying that this is people that we mm -hmm. work with, but it is an expectation that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, aren't you going to do that dumb TikTok video where you debase yourself so that you can get more people to watch your music video? Or aren't you going to uh, be whatever? And so I... You got to fight I, the I, ocean. I, that's that's a... You want to promote the new song. Go fight that's the ocean. A, that's, well, but that's what I, I... What I enjoy is like I, I do TikTok in a way where I kind of like to... Um, to make fun of the whole idea yes uh a little bit as as we've shown the last time that i was on here yes um but and again i'm not judging the artists that do this i just think i post on instagram like once every blue moon because it's something that i want you to see mm -hmm. and i don't feel like i need you to know that i'm going to target right now but if that is something that you want to do uh, far be it for you but uh, to, or far be it for I, me to stop I mean, somebody now that we're now we're here I, what's your target loadout like what do you what do you what's your go-to like do you uh is it like a weekly target thing or well like... the app will tell you uh okay. so you know i guess well but my phone's all the way over there it's, it's okay so we don't i guess we'll never know i'm, I'm not we'll you know because here's the thing my one of my cats is sitting right here on my phone oh. and it's so cute that if i were to get my phone he would have to move and i want him to be happy more than i want my let phone. the cat live let the cat do its thing it's, it's got to chill love animals yes exactly uh, but uh I, I i i'm with you with that too because i feel like a lot of especially people with platforms feel like they have to like forcefully almost uh social pressure or like by their audience that they have to be the end all be all and be like this is right this is wrong but they like no matter what even if it's on the political end you're going to be <laughs> have half your audience disagree with you 50 percent of the time <laughs> so it's just it's this weird balance even if you well but but i know. mean the only problem with that is that it, it is truly um it's a different world and i yeah. think that there's a little bit of a cop-out nature to artists being like well i don't have any opinions on anything because yeah. i don't want to alienate half of my audience That's but true. by the same token for me i exist in a world where uh i really am am un unconnected and i yeah. and I, I i never was that way earlier in my life i was always very much wanting to to be abreast of everything that's happening mm -hmm. and i reached a point where creating stuff and you know sitting in this room and painting and drawing and making costumes and and looking at my fucking toy collection or whatever else uh and hanging out with my wife and our cats and like living my life became so much more important for me and for yeah. my mental health than making sure i knew everything that was happening and then as you realize as time goes by and the 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 ignorance and the, the way that you feel of being ignorant is sort of replaced with actual conversations so yes. i can talk to somebody in real life and talk to someone about the events of the world in a way that is humanizing as opposed to we all seem to in this day and age enter into uh, political or, so, or social conversations uh, ready with our version of exactly what we it's like yeah. everyone has taken a bunch of cocaine because cocaine's a drug where you're just waiting for the other person to be done talking so that you can say the thing you want to say okay uh, and that's sort of how everyone is now right, everyone yes. knows exactly their stance and they're just either you're going to agree with them or they're waiting for you mm -hmm. to finish talking so that they can tell you exactly how they feel about something and that's not a way to converse and you don't learn anything that way so fun. the more I detach from mm -hmm. the constant feed of news of everything all the time, the more I find myself able to have conversations with people that I meet or see in real life mm -hmm. that are enriching and interesting and human. Mm -hmm. well, you, well, you seem like you're in a very like healthy, you know, self-aware space, which I think is amazing because it's it's hard for many musicians and people nowadays because they're dealing with all the stuff and <laughs> you know always on and checking what the fuck is is happening so intensely and feeling like you know like they all this pressure which i i love that you seem like just very well i think one thing you realize is that when when you're in a position where you have a fan base hmm. no matter what you do and say there's going to be people that you cannot make happy oh yeah and um it took me a long time and for years i'd be like well if you know the, I remember there was uh, many, many years ago, there was a situation where uh, there was one person that I'd always see just saying all this negative stuff all the time. Mm. And 
I remember you you know in those days there was so much less so you would and your feeds were um in sequential order and so like I would get on Twitter or whatever and I'd see my replies and and there was just everything was smaller numbers so you could start to recognize right. people's faces or whatever and I remember this one account that I'd see all the time and then I remember when they would say that they were going to a show and I would I would make such a an effort to okay they're going to come to the meet and greet and I'm going to show them that I'm a really nice person and that right. I really appreciate them. And they're going to stop saying mean stuff about me or my choices or my clothes or all this other stuff. And I remember one time it being like, where I, Oh man, I did such a good job. And now their, their whole opinion is going to change. Well, like a fool, I remember checking social media, like later the next day and being like, did they say great stuff? And of course it was just about how fake I was and how Jesus. I'm pretending to be nice and all this. And I thought, uh oh, okay i see you can't win this you can't so it, it was i've been very fortunate that not a single person ever 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 has come up to me and said a negative thing to me in person right it all exists on the internet yeah uh it, it you know it may be playing a festival people flipped us off in the early days or whatever but when it comes to like if i'm at the mall or if i'm at target or whatever nobody's walking up and saying like i hate your band or you suck or whatever it's just positive stuff That's so and and i think that the hardest thing for artists to accept is that sometimes within their own fandom mm -hmm. there's even more vitriol because people feel so connected to it because yeah. you're not you're not really a person you're uh you're a version and it's the same thing with me like as a kid mm -hmm. i always bring it back to afi because that was the first band that it went AFI and then Alkaline Trio. And then Alkaline Trio became my everything. Nice. And AFI sort of faded for me. Mm. But I remember as a kid being frustrated with AFI because they changed their sound and their image and all this. Mm. And I had all these big opinions about them as people right. based on fucking nothing. Right. But it's impossible to not have that when these pictures of these people are all over your life and, and it means so much to you. You, you develop opinions that are strong. Right. And some artists get mad about that and i think that when i realize that i i'm not mad about it is when i realize that it's not for me mm -hmm. just like fan fiction isn't for me it's not meant for me to read when someone asks me like what do you think of sexual fan fiction my answer is always like well why am i why would i be reading it it's not written for me it's written for fans right. to enjoy with each other because that's the thing that they enjoy right and when you as the person who is the subject of the conversation enter into a conversation about you that they don't that the people who are having that conversation don't realize that you're there it's a fucking weird thing it so is. that it's better to just pull back because then you won't see that there's a certain element of everyone's fan base that will be mad at them because that's part of the narrative that they've written for mm -hmm. do you do you spend because you, you see you're very introspective and i love that like do you do you spend a lot of the day just like like thinking and being in your kind of head or like just just chilling and like understanding the world, life, interactions, all of that, or is it just? Uh, I I mostly think about weird noises in songs. Um, <laughs> Are the weird noises in the songs? Yeah. Okay. And you know, thank God, we actually Lilith and I were talking about this the other day. The two of us have that same thing. Hmm. So our it, thank God we found each other because ninety percent of what happens in this house is. Like I'll be singing the theme song to the commercial for a place called the beach in Cincinnati in the nineties that, you know, or something like that. Right. Uh, or, you know, making up a song about the food that I'm making or making up a song about our cats mm. or making up a song about, uh, terrible nicknames that I'm, I'm giving Lilith or, or whatever it is. Right. Uh, so I would love to tell you that I'm some sort of a, like, uh, genius philosopher who's sitting and, and contemplating the world around me. But the reality is, I'm mostly just thinking of like fart noises and beeps. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fair. Is it ever like do you do you do you still get tripped out like oh damn like I'm 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 Andy from that from that from Black Veil you know like does that ever do you like you're very you think a lot right but do you ever disconnect from like okay I am I am. Andy and I am Andy from Black Veil, you know, the people that when they see me in public or something, they're like, oh my God, it's Andy. You know what I mean? Like, is that, does that still trip you out? Like, how is, how is that, you know, relationship for you, I guess? Well, I feel really fortunate that anyone gives a shit about me or, or what I do. Um, you know, I think that if you're lucky in your life, you get to, to do the thing that you wanted to do. And my biggest dream was to get to do this. And, and the fact that I'm uh, 33 years old and people are still allowing me the opportunity to do this 
Um, I just feel thankful for it. I don't know that I have any uh, any part of me that feels um, blown away by it in the sense that I I have I have had a singular focus and I've worked really hard all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I also know that it takes luck in the early days to get to a place where people know who the fuck you are. I think that every single day, probably 80 million people write songs that are better than any song I've ever written, but mm -hmm. mine got heard and you know, for whatever the luck of the draw, maybe theirs didn't. It's just, it's, it's a crapshoot. So mm -hmm. I feel more lucky than anything. Um, and I feel really fortunate, but I also know that with that comes the tenacity to, to work hard all the time and to deliver on the promise that I've given people that I want to entertain them. Right. So if they give me the platform to do it, I I will bust my ass and make sure I do it. Yeah, because you, you you seem to, like you you seem hungry still, which is you know when bands have done it, they've been in it for so many years and they've you know like made it, you know good to go. You know you guys could probably retire if you want, and be sad and live life and all that. But you seem like someone that's still like always looking to do more. That is hungry. That is like you know sure like I'm at this level or we're here you know as a band and I'm here as an individual, but like we can let's keep going. Like, is, is that, is that how kind of how you are? Like, what is, what is that mindset? I guess. I mean, I think that's, two, it's, there's two parts to it. One is that's just sort of how I function. Mm. Um, you know, if I don't have a project that I'm working on, uh, it's just, again, from a mental health perspective, it's very hard to, to sit with all my thoughts and, and all my freakouts and things. So I, it's better to have something to work on. Right. Um, but, uh, I would say the other part of it is, you know, sometimes the story that's told about, you know, what's now called the the Nepo babies or whatever, right? But it's a it's a story. It's an age as old, a story as old as time, right? Someone who's born with a lot doesn't feel the need to work for something, right? And I think that there are a lot of bands and a lot of bands from our era who, from the minute that they came out, they were sort of crowned the the princes of the world mm -hmm. and uh, given every opportunity and told how great they were. And so many of them rested on their laurels and stopped trying because if you're told immediately how great you are, um, you know, it's very hard to, to have anywhere to go from there. Right. But fortunately for me, when we came out, people were throwing sandwiches and shit balls at me. So, you know, it was a little bit different experience where, mm -hmm. you know, we uh, Kerrang had us on the cover as the most hated band in the universe. I'll, I know I'll never forget. Um Metal Sucks had the headline when we were working on our first record that right. uh, the shit stain on the asshole of the universe was what, what they called us. Fuck. Um, what and fuck? So when you're a teenager and you're just trying your hardest and that's what's being said about you. Right. And then you like go to an award show and everyone's booing or you play a yeah. festival and everybody's throwing shit at you or boo. Like, I'll never shake that. And until the day that, um, you know, that changes, which I don't know if it ever will, I'll always feel like we're fighting against something and I'll right. always have that like I'm going to fucking show you mentality and I can't help it. Right. That's it's 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 great cuz you like for, and again I'm 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 not just saying so you, like you guys make bangers. Like I I you know I've yeah. listened to y'all for for many years and it's like it's always fun and I love you know the it has the heavy metal edge and your voice is obviously super unique and you add you know you, the riffs are always fucking great and like no matter what whenever you guys drop a track even you know nowadays I'm like all right, I'm, I'm I'm excited. I'm gonna listen to it. You know, like let's let's go. Like let's see what's kind of going. Thank you. Nick. So it's it's. I'm excited for Bleeders too. By the way, Chad. Well, I'll be honest with you. I think a fair amount of of that is, and and this is it's mm -hmm. many things, but I think a lot of it boils down to uh, a lot of misogyny. You know, mm -hmm. we had a lot of young girls that were fans of us in the mm -hmm. very beginning of the band, especially, and the metal community has a long history of anything that girls like must somehow not be valid. Um, and you know. I think that it's grown a lot now and that's not so much the yeah. case, but you can't really shake the introductory thing, you right. know, where people will hear us or come to a show and see us and they go, Oh, this isn't at all what I, cause the people listen with their eyes or what right. they were told. And mm -hmm. most of that is based upon the fact that there's this now very clearly incorrect idea that the music industry had, which was that bands that have a young girl audience must graduate to a mature male audience if they're going to stick around because for some reason i guess so they thought weird. that uh the, the youth is what keeps you going somehow less valid yeah, like like the, uh, the, you know the younger generation listening to your music that's what's gonna keep everything you but know, people understand that more now than they yeah. did a decade ago and that's a right. good thing but i think that the hidden thing people don't like to talk about as much is that almost all of the vitriol that was placed upon let's call them like you know the group of 
six or seven of us like metalcore bands that came out of our era. Right. Um, the vitriol from the metal community was primarily based upon the fact that a lot of young girls listened to these bands mm. and in their minds, they couldn't wrap their head around the fact that that was not somehow a disservice to the music. So, so uh, I think the fact that we've moved beyond that to a large degree is, is very good, but it's also, it just goes part and parcel with the fact that, um, you know, we genuinely were making music for people who felt disenfranchised and from people who themselves felt disenfranchised. Right. And I wasn't, I was never selling loneliness to lonely people or trying to cash in on an idea. It mm. was, I was a kid very similar to the age of our audience and speaking about things that they felt themselves. Yeah. That makes sense, man. That's like, you guys have had such a wild journey. I got to give you mad credit again, dealing with so much shit for so many years. Sure. Uh, and, and and being a man too, it's not like you guys do bad like bad things to people, right? Like there's there's bands yeah. that I you know they they're shitty people, like some you know like they're sure. not the best, and they do shitty people to their shitty things to their fans and all of that, right? Like okay, maybe some of the hate for those like I get it, right? <laughs> like but. Like you guys have always just been just chill. You do your thing and you're just fun, personable. And it's, you know, if it is just because of the, you know, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of young females back in the day following you guys, or if it is like the outfits, you know, and stuff like that, it's, it's just wild. But it's, it's good that nowadays that I think like funny enough, as much as TikTok is it's its own fun plague on the earth, it's a gift because I feel like it's opened up so much of the younger generation and just everybody, you know, to be yeah. like listening to metal. It doesn't matter. Like you see, t you know, there's 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 teenagers that'll throw on like the heaviest of shit, or, and then followed by like let's put on like Deftones and like some super chill sure. lo-fi beats. And it's it's very it's nice now. It is it's much more like inclusive in that way without it being like forcefully inclusive. It's just like everyone can listen to what the fuck they want, and no one seems to care as yeah. much as much yeah. as before. I I, th I think it's really great because um, I love seeing how varied our audiences are now in terms of the age ranges and everything. Like it's it's so different now that, to what it used to be. Um, not and not speaking gender specifically. I just mean to say you have very young people coming to these shows, and we always laugh. I mean, the funny thing that TikTok has done, and you see these trends come back around. Yeah, it's always funny for me when we're in a public place and my wife and I will be out and someone will approach us who's like 14 years old and looks like a 14 year old in 2009 right like with the hair and the belts right. and everything and it's like sort of this thing how trends come back around it's like yeah. you know this this sort of stuck in time thing that you see now because tiktok you see people that are you know their whole vibe is they dress like uh you know 2002 preppy kids or whatever right. you know like it's it's very interesting to see that and uh it, it certainly has benefited all of us in the in the the hard rock world because none of us have really ever been given the shine from the mainstream music world. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we exist in this sort of strange place where uh, we've all been able, you know, the, the bigger bands of our era have been able to sustain careers and continuously grow and get bigger or whatever else, um, you know, but outside the realm of mainstream fame. You know, look at, uh, look at uh, Ronnie, for example. You know, this yeah. is a person who exceedingly successful in terms of crowd size and everything else yeah. um never on the vmas never anything like that you know yeah. and and that you know escape the fate was a band that came from that ilk uh yeah. same thing with you know obviously bring me the rise and now has more mainstream attention and they've done more in the mainstream but yeah. a similar situation where these are bands that yeah. were never uh top you know top 10 us all right, over your right. tv everywhere can't escape them artists that this many years into their career are playing arenas and amphitheaters and everything else i think it's really a testament to how much more widespread stuff is now yeah even like just in the great like not the great greats like metallica but like the you know i guess modern generation 2000 greats like all the new metal bands for example like it's it's so wild seeing how big that scene is and kids are growing up nowadays still discovering as if it's back in the 2000s like sure. oh my god what's slipknot what you know sure, yeah and like they might discover it through custer because fucking tiktok but god damn fucking that's i i don't even know what that means it's, Nick. It's, uh you know, whatever you just said has no, general I mean, custer it's, it's, custard the custard, this, other type of ice cream the other type of ice cream yes but sure. it's it's cool to see just all like the generations growing up with the same music that i mean at least i grew up with all that stuff in the 2000s too and it's like weird but it's like great this stuff's still going and then there's still the modern scene of bands coming up spirit box sleep token you know bad omens sure. that are pushing the scene as well and it's 
it's it seems like much healthier and i and i love to see you guys also just continue to do your thing and just have that hunger never stop having that hunger and just continue to just be yourselves and, and make music and i guess i guess with that i guess i have like one more little question because you guys have been going for a long time and you also were you were with sumerian for most of your guys career most one of record uh two records oh two one, records one re-release and the phantom tomorrow we were with uh universal um oh, the okay. lava end okay. of universal for yeah. the vast majority of our career right and then um we did the restitch these wounds uh re-release re-recording of our first record and sumerian released that okay and then we did the phantom tomorrow with sumerian that makes sense um yeah. and now we are back in uh the universal system um with spine farm with, which is a universal because yeah spine farm i i again i i spine farm is they just did you know the sleep token record and all that stuff so how is i know it's always different it doesn't really matter because the band's gonna do what the fuck the band does but like does it feel like kind of a new era in that sense of like all right let's go new label new music new all of this like you guys kind of feeling that or is it more just like all right you know we're gonna we're making more music trying new stuff and another label another label who really kind of cares like well you know you always benefit from the people around you and and we've always had uh great situations around us in terms of people that believed in us right. um but i would say that spine farm um thus far especially has really shown a tremendous amount of belief in the band and excitement for this release so and has been um really aggressively into all the ideas and pushing things as far as we can and um i just feel very fortunate because as you say you know we're a lot of years in our career and for us to be in a situation where um you know we're back in the universal world which is kind of what we're most comfortable with but also now with people that are new and fresh that we've never worked with before mm -hmm. and uh it's been amazing i can't say enough positives so far and we haven't even released uh, the material yet but um every day there's something new going on in terms of this release and their level of excitement and enthusiasm is pretty unparalleled so i'm really excited to to see how this goes and uh to have a new creative relationship awesome well i'm stoked i'm stoked to hear bleeders i heard uh you know when i was watching a little docuseries i was like oh what? i heard the word breakdown and i was like okay let's see what we got oh yeah sure <laughs> I, did, I, heard, I heard the word i heard the word yeah. breakdown. And i'm like no it's uh okay. you know everybody always says this but i i really think it's a i'll put it this way i think that it's a great representation of where we are now musically and kind of where um it's i think sometimes people want to when you're this many years in you go one of two ways you try to do a fully new thing or you try to go back and do your past yes. and i think that we've hit a really good spot where we're incorporating enough new into what we're doing mm. but we are refining the parts of the band uh that make blackville blackville i think that sometimes bands um get people will say oh this every song sounds the same or whatever uh mm -hmm. for certain bands and i think that the goal for any band is to try to take your sound and amplify it and grow it and evolve it and i think that mm -hmm. this is a very natural evolution for us musically and it's I, i'm just exceedingly excited about it so I, I think if you're a fan of the band you'll love the song and i hope uh new listeners find it and enjoy it let's go any any plans for for yourself for for andy not just maybe musically but also if you have any plans you know acting wise or any of that stuff that you can talk about or is it just going with the flow so far there is there's a lot of that but nothing i can talk nothing about can, oh, uh gosh. working on a bunch of stuff right now uh both on the the film side and the the comic side and uh a lot of things Mo most notably right now i can hear that uh one of my cats just got out of the cat box so that'll be the next thing that I'm that'll be the on. next thing you're uh, starring in like that. Ooh. <laughs> And last question, most important question. I've, I've asked every guest we've had on the show since since a specific moment. Do you throw block? Do I throw block? Do you throw block? I feel like you know that I don't know what this means. Uh... <laughs> it's so we had we had we had clown from Slipping on the show. Lovely episode, and for an hour and a half okay. we talked about Minecraft, and he's coined the word throwing block with the homies. So now I have to ask every single guest we have on the show if they throw block in the sense in, in a bigger meaning do you play minecraft and have fun throwing the block to build the things i'm not even entirely sure what minecraft is so this is uh you know it's not really mm -hmm. remember when i said that i'm really uh, uh, unconnected from things and i right. just you know play with my toys and and r draw and write comic books that's that's pretty much all i got going on so no sadly uh i have to go with the i don't uh throw block 
It sounds a little bit like a sexual euphemism, you know, like lay pipe. Uh... Andy Beerzak of Blackmail Brides, everyone. Show the always love. Check out Bleeders. It is out next week. Go go watch it and then stream it and then watch it. We'll check it out on stream, obviously, and see what the fuck is up, obviously. Um, and show the boys the love. You know, if they got EPs, if they got music, come and check it out. If they're on tour near you, go see them live and see Andy's beautiful face uh, raw at you and sing at you. Right there. I'll do both. He, he does both. He does yeah. both. Andy, you're a gem. Thank you so much for coming to hang, bro. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate you. Have a good uh, day. Can't wait to do this again. Yes, thanks, man. Have a beautiful <laughs> day, dude. See ya. <laughs>